plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Sponsored by heatandplum.com. Big, welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. Today we're going to look at thermostatic radiator valves, otherwise known as TRVs. They individually control the temperature in the room to an individual radiator. Firstly, we're going to have a look at how to change them, and then we're going to have a look at how they work. I hope it's very informative. Hold tight! So, how does a thermostatic radiator valve work, and what's the difference between that and a normal radiator valve? Well, firstly, a normal radiator valve is just a valve that moves up and down and shuts off the flow of hot water from the boiler into the radiator, just like the tap on a bath tap. The main difference with a thermostatic radiator valve is that it automatically controls the amount of hot water going into a radiator according to the current heat of the room that it's situated in. There are two main types of thermostatic radiator valve. One uses a spring that expands and contracts and the other uses a wax jacket that does exactly the same. For this video we're going to look at the spring type because they both work in a very similar way. So we have a spring that is made of metal that is very susceptible to the temperature around it. If the room is cold, the metal will be contracted because when metal is cold, it is contracted. Therefore, the valve jumper will be open and hot water will be allowed to flow into the radiator. If the room is warm, the spring will expand and that valve will be pushed down and the flow to the radiator will stop. And that's how they work. A very common problem I have with customers is, sometimes they'll come in, the room is cold, the radiator, when they feel it, blazing hot, and yet they still go to the thermostatic radiator valve and open it up more. That's completely pointless. The room is cold, the radiator's hot, therefore the thermostatic radiator valve knows that the room is cold and is trying to heat it up. If you go into a cold room and feel the radiator and it's hot, do not touch the thermostatic radiator valve. Only touch it when you go into the room and it's cold and you find that the radiator is cold. Also, another thing you need to consider is where you can actually install thermostatic radiator valves. If you have a house with two rooms, in one room you have the room thermostat which controls the whole heating system and one radiator. In the other room you have another radiator and that has a TRV on it. Don't put a TRV in the room that has the room thermostat in it. The reason for that is if the TRV closes down and the room thermostat is not satisfied it will never knock the heating system off to the whole house and you won't get any saving. That room thermostat there needs to have an exactly true reading of the maximum capacity that the heating system can give out. Therefore the radiator in the room with the room thermostat should have a lock shield on it that is fully open. So let's go back to the house and find out how you actually change a lock shield over for a TRV and really how easy they are to install. I'm assuming you all know how to drain down the heating system already, finding the lowest point in the heating system and drain off, taking your hose outside and opening that up and making sure the water supply is turned off to the heating system. Next, you allow air into all the radiators that you want to change on the TRVs. Generally, if you're a bit worried about this, let air into every radiator in the house. As you hear the air sucking. As soon as you see your hose outside stop running, that should indicate that the heating system is drained down and you're ready to change the valve. Let's have a look here. As you can see, we are removing this old lock shield valve here, which is just an on and off valve. So, now that we know the system is all drained down, we can loosen that off. Now's the time just to make sure that the water has drained out the system as you can see it has and then we can loosen off the 15mm compression fitting on the bottom as you can see our new TRV isn't going to fit on this current radiator insert all new TRVs are supplied with a new insert so this one here will need removing there are special tools to do this. You can have a hexagonal tool that goes in like that, a square tool, a lug tool cut in here. This is quite an old one as you can see. Today I'm going to use this here because we've got a hexagonal fitting on there. Now often you can just lift that up and move it around, but generally you'll have to adjustable spanner on like this and then wind it out like that.
there's the old insert out and that's the old valve completely removed. Now we need to PTFE this thread. Do that by having the PTFE on here, just hold it on with your thumb and then wrap it round like so. Do that about 10 times I'd say. Insert into the radiator and then tighten up. The old nut and olive on here should still be fine to use, but if you're not happy you can just pull the nut off and use a pair of grips to pull the olive off. But today what we're going to do is just wrap a small amount of PTFE around the olive to ensure a watertight seal on the bottom of our new valve and then we'll apply our new valve. Once you've wrapped the PTFE around the fitting we are ready to push the fitting back on, tighten up that bottom joint first, just lift this up into the front here like so. Tighten that up like that. Remove the top cap and that will show the actual valve jumper. As you can see that moves up and down. Put the valve to five so it will go on. There you go, we have now a working TRV. I hope you found today's video informative and that we've given you an idea about how a TRV works and how to install it. If you need any more help or any more information, we think we've missed something out, do let us know through our channel and as ever, favourite and subscribe. Have a lovely day and I'll see you as Liz. Hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice. Sponsored by heatandplum.com